That's good stuff, isn't it? I've enjoyed so much just watching those videos and seeing what has been going on uh, so many years. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the whole walking through all of the, the seasons that we've seen in this ministry that God has raised up. You know, the, the group of many of you who are probably still in this room who came to know Jesus Christ through... Uh, just a ministry of a man and uh, got saved and wanted to grow in their faith. And so they made their way up to Community Bible Church in Minneapolis and were growing in their faith and, and seeing what God was doing there and really being challenged with good Bible teaching and uh, growing up and being discipled and being sanctified and then feeling called like maybe we ought to start something in our old town where we uh, lived. And so, you know, discussing that and not being comfortable, just staying comfortable, but feeling God call them out and coming down to Bennington and facing some opposition and trying to find a place to meet and uh, starting in a basement and moving to a bar. And I just love calling it the bar. And so do you, because it's like we uh, redeemed that place and we sanctified that place and God worked in that. And we saw you know, him, him raise people up and we saw people saved. And so we've just seen so many seasons. And uh, for our our part, you know, we got here about 15 years ago and uh, we're, we're able to, you know, kind of walk into this building. It was already built, but still seeing, you know, what God has done in that time. And we've seen God grow us and give us some influence in our community. And it's just been absolutely amazing. It's been a privilege. Uh, it's been difficult. There have been really hard times, but overall, God has just, for some reason, allowed the Bible church to be a light to the community. And we are not here to toot our own horn or say, look at how good we are because we are, there's nothing good in us except Jesus Christ. But we are here to say that to God be the glory for what he has done. But we believe that he's got more. We believe he's gonna move even further. And so, you know, we've been talking about these standing stones and I'm getting really tired holding this last one. So I'm gonna put this fifth one up and you know, just to remind you kind of what these things are all about, uh, there's a great passage of scripture. These are called Ebenezer's, uh, a standing stone. And uh, I don't want to give you the whole backstory of what's going on in this particular passage other than to say that God really blessed the nation of Israel and restored them and, 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 and brought something back that they had lost. And it was a wonderful, wonderful time. And so in 1 Samuel chapter 7, it says this is what Samuel did because of God's faithfulness. It says Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen, two different places. And he named it Ebenezer, saying, thus far, the Lord has helped us. And so every time we see a rock like that, anytime the Israelites saw a stone standing out there, they could ask the question, why was that there? And the parents would testify because God was faithful and he's been faithful to us, and it's amazing to me. And we want to give him all of the praise, but we are just sensing that we're not done here. We've only scratched the surface on what we believe God is calling us to. But in this time, you know, he's really given us growth, and our concern is that we can handle it that we can honor God with what God has given to us. And so we've really been thinking through how do we minister effectively to all of you? What do we do? What can we put in place to minister effectively? And so really the staff, and we've been talking for quite some time about, you know, uh, upgrading and figuring out how to best minister. And uh, we went on an elders retreat back in January and really prayed about, you know, what the direction is for our body here. And you'll see all of these folks back here. Some of them are elders. They were in the elders retreat. Some of them are part of what we call a vision team where we got together and sort of 
hammered this thing out and you know, talked about where God is leading us and what he wants us to do. And, and, and through all of that, we came upon this vision statement. And we wanna share it with you. And um, for the next several weeks, we're gonna break it down and talk about it. But here's what it says. And you can look up on the screen and, and see what the statement says. But this is, this is what we want to do. This is what we feel God is leading us to do as a body to really be effective in ministering. So here's the vision statement. The Bennington Bible Church exists to glorify God as we meet every person or each person where they are with the love of Jesus to rescue, restore, and rejoice. And I know that that is something that maybe if you just listen to it, you go, I don't fully understand. Well, we're going to explain it over several weeks, just explaining what that means. We believe that inside of this statement is a real biblical mandate to fulfill the great command and the great commission. And so over the next several weeks, we'll talk about this um, and what God is doing. But we are grateful. We want to give him all of the glory. And I do want to visit just a couple thoughts. You know, um, as we've grown, as things have changed, as we've seen God bring people to uh, this incredible place, there may be some questions about it. You know, why are we doing what we're doing? Well, the reason we're doing what we're doing is to be better at doing what we do. We want to be honoring to God. We don't want to see people fall through the cracks. We don't want to take this incredible opportunity and mess it up. And so we are trying our best to put something together to help and minister. When I was in seminary, I had a professor who uh, told a story that really illustrated it to me, and maybe it will to you, maybe not. But he said, um, imagine, you know, that we're sitting in class, and I say, hey, guys, let's, let's go for a bus ride. And we're all like, oh, okay, let's go for a bus ride. And so we go down out of class, and we pile into this bus, and we just start going somewhere. And pretty soon, you know, we're enjoying it. I mean, the company and everything, but pretty soon somebody's going, hey, where are we going anyway? And the bus driver said, I don't know. We're going somewhere and we're making great time. Isn't it amazing? And everybody's kind of thinking this is strange. And after a while, you know, you get close to people like, stop touching me. And I don't want to be on this bus with you anymore. And it's just, you know, how travel is. And because you don't know where you're going, you're not getting along very well. And then all of a sudden, the tire blows out on the bus. And the bus driver says, somebody want to go out and change that tire? And everybody's like, no. I don't know where I'm going. And you want me to change a tire? You want me to get involved in that? No, I'm not going to do that. But imagine, he said, if we're sitting in class and we hear a siren and we know that something has happened and we find out that, let's say, the Sears Tower is on fire and we've got a vehicle to take us to that fire to do some good. And we all pile in to the bus and we're traveling and we're looking forward and we want to get there. And the tire blows out. How many of us wouldn't jump at the opportunity to change that tire to get us moving even quicker? He said, you see, a vision does that. Having an idea of where you're going does that. And this is what we're trying to do is create a vision that gets you excited about what God has next. And we know that there might be a bit of a, a grieving process. You know, we've, we've seen so many changes over the years and maybe people would say, we're not the same church we used to be. Well, you're right, we're not. But I kind of think about it like having kids. You know, we have three kids and it was fun to have them and to watch them grow. And every stage has been great. And the oldest one finally got old enough to graduate from high school. And some of you know what that's like. The oldest is... It's so hard. It's like gut-wrenching. And I remember the day we took him to college and we're crying on the way and we're hugging there and we're weeping and not wanting to let go. And, and we get in the car and we cry all the way back home and we go down into his room and we look at all of his stuff and we cry some more. And then the second child comes along <laughs> and we're going, college is coming. College is coming. <laughs> And we sort of encouraged him to go ahead and go on out the door. And it was a lot better. It was joyful. We knew what had happened. We knew it was coming. And then the third child. 
And we were helping her pack a month before school got there. We were like, yes, go, we'll take you. And we rejoiced at the fact that she went. Well, I mean, I don't want to go that far, but you know what I'm saying, because we knew what was out there. That's why we had children, right? Well, so they would grow up and be on their own and become who they were supposed to be. And we believe that God has raised this place up, not to become, you know, some uh, trophy that we show off, but so that we go out and we minister. And so that's what we're doing. And we're excited about it. And we'll talk about it the next few weeks. But we want John to kind of share a little bit from the elders' perspective. Well, good morning. I, I don't want to take uh, anything away from what we're doing here this morning. But I would really be remiss if I didn't thank you all for the gifts that you gave towards Africa and the flood that in Uganda that they were having over there. I've sent that money off. It was nearly $3,000. And um, you can't know what a difference that makes to those people over there. We can't help all of them, but we can help a few. So that was, that was tremendous, and I thank you for that. Uh, you know, I'm a guy that hates change. Uh, if I had my way about it, I would probably be still living back in the 50s, playing Little League Baseball, and driving a Massey Ferguson tractor pulling a two-bottom plow. But as much as I loved those uncomplicated days, God had something better for me. He brought me, he brought a wonderful woman to my, to my life. And now we have nine grandchildren, which is just awesome. Still, I look back with fondness on my childhood and teenage years, but I doubt seriously if they're ever going to let a 68-year-old guy play Little League Baseball. We can't go back. We just can't. And we can't stay the same. Now, many of us remember when we were in the bar. We were small. Everybody knew everybody else. And everybody was accountable to everybody else, whether they wanted to be or not. And God has moved us on from that point. Now we have new people that God is bringing to our church nearly every Sunday morning. And as elders, we feel responsible. We are accountable to God for every person that walks through those doors. Now for many months, your elder board has been concerned about how we can incorporate each member into our, into our body so that they can use their spiritual gifts and this church can be everything that God has intended it to be. I believe, and I believe the board believes, that what we are doing this fall, what we are beginning this fall, will go a long ways to accomplish what we're talking about here. Um, in his book, How Successful People Think, John Maxwell wrote, People often forget that you can't improve and still stay the same. Growth means change. Change requires challenging the status quo. If you want greater possibilities, you cannot settle for what you have now. I believe that God has blessed us with many gifted people. And as we allow and encourage each member of our church to exercise their spiritual gifts, our, our lampstand will shine brightly. And indeed, I know that it's the hope and the passionate desire for every member of our elder board to never lose that lampstand. And after we're, after we're gone, and we're up in heaven with Jesus. It's our greatest desire that this church will still be a light to this community for Jesus. Thanks, John. Um, you've heard the word change a little bit here. And um, I want to assure you, and I think we all want to assure you, that that doesn't mean that we change uh, who we are. It doesn't change that we focus on uh, Scripture, that Jesus is at the center of all we do. 
Uh, that doesn't change. The message of the gospel doesn't change, and it won't change here at Bennington Bible either. Um, what you may see, though, are a few visual changes. And um, you saw those maybe as you walked in the door this morning, whether that was uh, in, in your bulletin or just a couple of things um, decor-wise. Uh, in the same way that these standing stones are a visual rep representation of what God has done and his faithfulness, we really are, in, in, in making some of the changes visually, it's helping us to recall and remember those seasons and where we're at now and where God is leading us. And so it doesn't change who we are, but it changes a little bit of the look and the aesthetics of our church. And so this new logo, um, just to kind of give an explanation of it, as you see the graphic on the far left, uh, as a Bible church, many of our Bibles have bookmarks. And so it's in the shape of a bookmark to remind us that we are a Bible church with the cross at the center. So Jesus at the center of who we are. Uh, if you were to go on the west side of our building and look, you would see that there is a cross on our steeple. And so that just kind of a steeple there at the bottom with the cross on the top as well. So just a couple small pieces of who we are as a church in that particular logo. Uh, you'll also see as you walked in a connection center. And the connection center really is a central place uh, for us to better communicate with you all. Uh, admittedly, as staff, we probably haven't done a great job communicating some things, and so it's our hope that we can do a better job to prepare our Connection Center volunteers uh, who can provide you with answers to your questions, information that you may need. Uh, if, you, if there's a sign up for something, we will direct you to, to them. Uh, if you need directories, you can go there. If you need a Bible, you can go there. Uh, anything that you have questions about, if you need directions somewhere in the building, you can go there. But it's kind of your first stop for all of those things. And uh, we really want you to utilize that as a way to uh, receive the information that you need. So that's gonna be open on Sunday mornings. Uh, we've got people volunteering to help there. If you'd like to volunteer to help as a part of that, uh, please see me or Carolyn and we'd be happy to connect you with those guys. So those are some, some visual changes uh, that are around here. Uh, but again, not changing the gospel, not changing that Christ is at the center of all we do. Amen. And we're really excited to, to move forward with that. So hope you'll join us. Um, we are looking forward to your part of that. And so uh, we'll see over the next few weeks how that all fleshes itself out. But um, yeah, so there you go. All right. Let's pray together. All right. And let's um, just ask the Lord to be here and to, to move only as he can do. And then we will worship him in song. Lord.